In this video, I'll demonstrate core steps to creating and publishing an oriented imagery catalog utilizing Esri's ArcGIS Pro. In this demonstration, I'll use imagery from an MX7, a Trimble MX7 imaging rover. I do the same thing with an MX5 or MX9. They do use the same ladybug camera as the MX7. So all the steps that lead up to this moment as far as processing your imagery in Trimble Business Center, exporting to Mapillary using that particular option, uh, taking that resulting panorama CSV and polishing it up, making a few header adjustments, probably a few additional fields, all those sorts of preparatory preliminary steps prior to this video to this moment are the same regardless of which of those three Trimble MX sensors you use to capture your data. A couple other housekeeping items to point out, uh, OICs, short for oriented imagery catalogs, of course, are still in somewhat of a beta format with Esri as of this recording, November 2022. That is supposed to be changing the next couple of versions of Pro and will be becoming fully supported in core GIS, quote unquote, according to a source at Esri uh, by version 3.1, 3.2 or so. So all these steps likely will be changing, at least getting more stable, formally supported, so on and so forth. So this is a quick snapshot tutorial of where it sits at this moment in time. And a couple other housekeeping items, uh, the oriented imagery catalogs require a separate add-in for Pro, and that's a whole separate process. Just search for that, how to add that to your, your Pro instance. Um, you get companion documentation that comes with downloading the geo geoprocessing tools for managing oriented imagery catalogs, and that's really helpful. So where I'll pick up, though, is you need to actually have a separate toolbox added to your Pro project. So under the Insert tab here in the pane, in Pro, we'll add Toolbox, and I've already gone there, but you'll need to browse to where the image management workflows are saved on your local disk, and drill down to the geoprocessing tools, and add in Manage Oriented Imagery. You'll notice once you do that, you now can access all these tools through the catalog pane, not through your standard geoprocessing toolbox. All right, so with that, the core steps I'm going to complete here. Let me reference the formal documentation here. So the key required steps begin with, of course, creating your actual oriented imagery catalog. Here's seven steps here. In fact, the copy images to web, I recommend doing before you begin creating your IC. You don't have to do that, but it may take quite a while depending on your processing computer and your cloud storage, how you've got that set up. And then this analyze catalog is kind of like a QC, if you will, and how you set it up. So I'm going to skip those steps five and six. Just create the catalog, add the images, create coverage features, coverage map. And go ahead and publish the catalog in this video just for a little bit of brevity. But do refer to the full documentation, this full user guide. And I have a lot of other good information about your different cloud storage options. I'm using Azure in this example, whether it's Google Cloud or Amazon. There are some slightly different settings and some ways to actually grant access to your cloud storage from Pro, those sorts of things. So do refer to this full documentation for that. So that being the case, here I am in my Pro project. So I'm going to begin by creating the Oriented Imagery Catalog. And for coordinate system, this actually doesn't matter as far as what your input imagery is in. Per the Esri documentation, it will reproject those and generally not mess up your heading values and orientation, those sorts of things. So as anybody, of course, knows who's used ArcGIS Online extensively using the Web Mercator Auxiliary Sphere, tends to be uh, your best bet it used to be required. I feel like it's starting to change somewhat, but in any event, that's what I'm going to use in this example. It's just like creating another item that you want to publish to ArcGIS Online. So once you fill out those parameters, we'll go ahead and create sort of a blank OIC. So this runs our second step, we'll be actually adding the images to the to the OIC. Alright, so now I can go back and I'm gonna do 
add images. So I gotta select the one I just created, or you can browse to it if you're coming back. Now input type is an important selection, so frame table is the option we want to choose, and that allows us to bring in a CSV. It does need to be modified to match the Esri format, but that's very easy to do, taking your panorama CSV that gets exported from Trimble Business Center when using the export to map layer option. Quick side note, you could also use the export to TMX option that also produces a very similar CSV. I just found the mapillary CSV that comes out of TBC is closer to what Esri's looking for, so maybe slightly fewer modifications are needed, but you could truly do it either way. So we'll pick frame table as input type. Now it's going to ask us um, to point to that table, to that CSV. So here's my final polished CSV. And then really key thing here is to pick the appropriate imagery type. So if you're using the Ladybug camera as the MX7 is, or same thing with MX50 or 9, you're looking for terrestrial 360 camera. And based on the imagery type that you select here, it does inform how the rest of some of the kind of stock values for the viewer and other such things are configured. So you'll see right there it kind of filled in a bunch of these stock values. Now in my frame table here I actually populated a near and far distance so that's not going to be negatively overwritten or affected uh, by choosing this type but for any of these values and really all the rest do not have in my frame table it's going to control that way because of uh, this selection here for terrestrial 360 camera. So now that that's happened, I can go ahead and click Run. All right, now that that's occurred, we'll now actually have some features here in the map that we can zoom to. So we have each of the camera positions. that we've uploaded. And if we go to this image link, we'll actually see what those look like. So if at this stage, if you click one of those URLs in one of your camera exposure points and get some type of error message, unable to load viewer, there's something with the web GL settings sometimes, if you get an issue tied to your browser, check out the Esri documentation how to troubleshoot that. And there's also a cross-origin resource sharing rule that does need to be able to, in your cloud storage, whether it's Azure, Amazon, or Google Cloud. So do refer to the documentation for that as well, but assuming you can click this and it does load the image as mine did, all is well at this stage. Uh, and again, you'll notice, if you recall a few moments ago, the far distance I believe was set to 30 based on the imagery type, but my frame table overwrote that with a value of 50 and everything else is populated, namely heading, pitch, and roll from the frame table, but the field of view values were defaulted. So, again, there's a combination here of certain additions you need to make to the frame table, but other things you can let your selected imagery type control. So that being the case, go back to our catalog here, and we're now ready to create coverage features. This is sort of an optimization step for interacting with your OIC in RGS Online. So we just grab the catalog. Do you need to pick the appropriate option here? You can certainly play with these, but this option three to buffer each exposure point is considered optimal for street view style imagery, as of course we have in this case with the Trimble MX7. So that's all there is to that. Click Run. Now you'll notice we've got some other layers now in our contents. There you go. And back to catalog. Now we can do create coverage map. And if you launch this geoprocessing tool without running create coverage features first, it would actually do that as a preliminary step. So again, just select the OIC we're working on and click run. Then step, if I use my frame table to point to my cloud storage file paths, without actually having moved or uploaded my imagery to cloud storage first, I would at this stage want to use this copy images to web tool. Uh, this is where you'll have to actually have all your 
credentials to point to your cloud cloud storage provider. Uh, I find it easier just to go ahead and have done that offline before you begin doing this process here in Pro. By offline, I mean just don't wait to use this geoprocessing tool, but you certainly can, and I'll update your paths accordingly that would have started off local. But that's not relevant for my purposes. So I'm going to go back here to the catalog, and I could use this Analyze Oriented Imagery Catalog tool. I certainly recommend it. A really nice feature would actually be to check for broken paths, so just in case something went wrong on your cloud storage side and some of the image links are broken, great to run this. For the sake of time and brevity to go ahead and complete this tutorial, I'm not going to take that step. I'll do the final required tool or step of doing the publishing to ArcGIS Online. This again, for any experience as your users, your normal, um, you know, publish of anything, any item you'll put in ArcGIS Online. Of course, Ezra wants me to tag it because we're trying to build out oriented imagery. Maybe I'll do something else for tags. Um, we'll make a new folder. Let me. Ah, I forgot about this. You do actually have to have an existing portal folder in ArcGIS Online to select here. So for the sake of keeping this moving, I'm just going to push it here. But yeah, I forgot about that. It's kind of a weird quirk. You have to actually make your folder first. Many of us are used to you can actually publish um, and create new folders at this step of publishing, but not at least at this time with oriented imagery catalogs. So I'll use this existing folder, but again, we'll insert in bold here. Go ahead and make your appropriate folder first. So you can select it here in the drop down. And as far as publish options, um, you could actually just add this item, sort of blank, to ArcGIS Online. Maybe there's a reason to do that, but otherwise you're going to use Publish All to get all the other features, Publish, and the links to the imagery and everything else. So I'll click Publish All, and then Add Images as Attachments. You would not want to do this. Um, give me a little kind of help hint here, but we're not uploading our imagery to ArcGIS Online. That would be kind of crazy. This is a relatively small data set, just over 700 panorama images. Uh, in real life, real production environments, you've probably got an order of thousands, if not tens or hundreds of thousands. So that's the whole point of leveraging the cloud storage, your own cloud storage. So yeah, I find it exceedingly unlikely, if not, it just ain't going to happen, to actually check this box when dealing with Trimble MX series panoramic imagery. So that being the case, you name it, you tag it, you've already made your project-specific folder in ArcGIS Online, you select it here, option, publish all, and then we'll run. This will probably take a bit of time, so I'll go ahead and sunset this video. Once that runs, you go into ArcGIS Online like you would for any other items that you publish. You know, you set your sharing permissions appropriately. You can use Web App Builder to then add your OIC into a new web app and utilize that viewer. I'll make another quick housekeeping note. As of November 2022, some of the OIC functionality in ArcGIS Online is a little bit... Um, clunky, it's still in somewhat of a beta format, you might get some weird kind of vibrating images, some other kind of bugs, so do pay attention to how you set up and configure that web app. There are some other kind of hints and tricks and ways to kind of optimize that that are beyond the scope of this video, but again, it's scheduled to be improved here very shortly once they add OICs to Core GIS. And again, per at least one source I've spoken to at Esri, that is supposed to be coming within the next version or two of Pro and ArcGIS Online. And with that, that is a wrap.